he somewhat indicated to me that he, that he would have loved to have been a Buffalo soldier. Army Sergeant William Owen Willis served in World War I. His son, James R. Willis, didn't fall far from his father's family tree. Last time I had talked to him at the railroad stations, I was getting ready to go into the Marine Corps. Uh, he indicated to me that he would uh, uh, expect me to serve honorably and that uh, in reality he would rather see me come home in a box rather than branded a coward or to have served as honorably. At 97 years old, James Willis is a Cleveland military and legal legend practicing law still since 1952. He is part of American history most of us have never heard about. He is among the Montfort Point Marines, the first black men allowed to join the U.S. Marine Corps. And they said that they're looking for the best and the brightest. I said, well, hell, I don't have anything to worry about. They're looking for me. <laughs> Nearly 20,000 black men enlisted and trained at the segregated Montfort Point at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Mr. Willis year. volunteered in March of 1944, right about a year and a half after President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued Executive Order 8802, which prohibited all racial discrimination in the armed services. What was it like for you? I know it was rough, but when you went down to uh, Montfort Point, just off of Camp Lejeune. North Carolina had to be the worst segregated state in the Union. They used to talk about Mississippi and Alabama, but I don't see how any place could be worse than North Carolina at that time. He recalls how rough it was being black in the South. Black Marines on leave wanting to take a bus home experienced in-your-face discrimination, having to stand in long lines at the bus station. And, uh, and it was outside, and if there were any whites inside buying a ticket, they were in a line. You had to wait until that line was exhausted before they would come. Uh, to, he would say you a ticket. And Mr. Willis says five or six men a week washed out of the Corps because of prejudice and the tough training. He still recalls what a drill sergeant told him. He said, he said it don't rain in the Marine Corps. It rains on the Marine Corps. So you have to understand that. The man who trained them didn't look like them and treated them badly. But Mr. Willis remembers finding at least one ally, a lieutenant. And I always admired him. I can't remember his name right now, but he was from small town in Nebraska. But he was as liberal as they call. And he always defended us. I'll never forget him. The Montfort Point Marines labored honorably in service and supply units, the mules of war, hauling heavy equipment and munitions from battle to battle during World War II, the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Out of necessity, many picked up guns and fought for their country. Willis landed 18 miles from Nagasaki. I was out on the Pacific, uh, headed for, for Japan as a part of the invasion force uh, when they dropped the second atomic bomb. He was spared sure death. He made it home and went to college. Carl Stokes, for example, was at West Virginia State with me. Uh, he's got a federal building named after him. Both became Cleveland lawyers. Mr. Willis successfully defended one of the most notorious mob bosses in the city, Chandra Burns, considered public enemy number one at the time. He died in a car bomb, reportedly at the request of fellow mobster Danny Green. He still practices as a criminal defense attorney. I'm, I might add, uh, I've been rather successful in it. I, I argued personally four cases in the United States Supreme Court. As a matter of fact, I was elected as the first black president of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and that's the largest criminal defense organization in the country. In 2012, former Speaker of the U.S. House from Ohio, John Boehner, presided at the ceremony where Mr. Willis and other Montfort Point Marines were honored with the Congressional Gold Medals the country's highest U.S. civilian award. So the law has been good to me. I graduated from Case Western Reserve Law School uh, in 1952. That was an honor. Mr. James R. Willis, truly a Cleveland black history legend.